Hi and hello, this is Cami, and I am going to show you how to get that beautiful mid-century retro look in Photoshop, because Photoshop is what I use. I'm sure you will be able to use a lot of these tips and tricks also in other software, but um, I don't really know about that, so Photoshop is where it's at for me. Um, first of all, you want your inks and ideally you'll have been using a brush that is a little bit distressed um, or has a little bit of bleed going on. Um, the brushes that I really love to use are the ones by Kyle T. Webster, but there's so many out there. I will put a link to a few things in the description or the Tumblr post or whatever. Um, and you can check those out, out if you like to. Um, as for Photoshop, I believe that a lot of Kyle T. Webster's brushes now are part of the default set of Photoshop brushes, so you won't even have to download anything. Uh, just go look through them. A good keyword, because Photoshop now offers keyword searches even for its brushes, is Runny. Uh, the, the Runny Inker is what I really like. There's a whole bunch of them that Kyle T. Webster has. Um, so yes, you have your inks, you create a layer below that, and you start coloring. And if you find yourself wondering what sort of colors you should use, the first rule for that is limited palette, which means only a few colors. Do not use too many colors. Um, where can you get such a palette? Well, either you just are an artistic genius and know all about color theory, or you just go into the internet, type in something like 50s retro art and look for images. And then you, there you have a million things that can give you an inspiration. And if there's something you like, you just pick the colors from that, mix and match and change things a little bit up. That is perfectly valid. I like to have a whole folder of things with colors that I enjoy from photographs to other illustrations or just objects, all sorts of things. Um, another option that I like to use is uh, why not just reuse colors that you've already used? Um, they've worked before, surely they are going to work again. So that's what I'm doing here. Just pick the color from that other illustration and then I start very roughly coloring this. Um, a thing that I like to do is be really, really rough with this coloring. As you can see, there's still lots of areas that are white. Um, and what I think I'm trying to reproduce, I don't know if that really works, but um, is a sort of an in-between thing between um, screen tone printing and something like uh, Lino Cut, where when you use Lino Cut, you like it when the shapes that you create are as simple as possible and as non fiddly as possible, which is why I try to color in like big blocky shapes, which leaves um, small bits in white, which is something that I personally enjoy. Um, if that's not for you, fair enough. I enjoy coloring like that. Um, so yes, here we go, coloring the captain from BBC Ghosts. Um, I'm just going to do this very roughly, some more green for his uniform. Um, the good thing about this style is that A, it doesn't really use very many colors, and B, there is no shading at least not the way that I do it. So you should be done with this fairly quickly, unless, like me, you spend a million years fiddling over colors. Which shade of green exactly is the perfect one for this thing? But really, that is a step or a point for a different step. Right now, you're just laying down the flats can be any color pretty much you can still change stuff like that up very easily um, by just using the wand tool um, you can either set it to contiguous or not which means that if it's ticked it will only select stuff that is like one piece you see it's not selecting these bits over here if I do not check it it's going to select 
all the parts that have this color and some things that aren't really part of it and change that by changing the tolerance. Anyway, say I want to change his uniform to something else. I just press Control U, which brings up the hue saturation menu. And then you have a beautiful rainbow of possible colors. But because I've used these colors before, I know that they kind of work together. So I don't really need to do that. And that's not where we're here for either. Um, so there we go. Just really dirty quickly. Ah, oh, hold on. I did want to give those stars a little bit of gold and the medals that he has. Also, I forgot to ink that button here, but oh well. Um, right, there we go. The next step is to add a bit of a paper texture. I love textures. You've probably seen that if you've seen any of my work start out with a paper texture again stuff like this can either be bought links in the description or found on the google or any other place really um hold on let me find something in my enormous folder there we go it's gonna zoom out a bit for that oh no wait, 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 i'm not going to make it so that it fits the entire thing thank you photoshop for it moving stuff I don't want it to go and then the way I do it and you can't really see that but in my list of layers the texture is all the way at the top right now and then you just try to find a, a setting that you enjoy excuse me um, usually multiply will give you pretty go good results uh, since this texture already had quite a lot of color to itself, you might want to lower the opacity on that a little bit. And then there you have it. Wow, why are you doing that? Um, right, that was the paper texture. Now you want that screen tone look to your colors. And what you do for that is that you duplicate your color layer. What you want to have is all the colors on one layer. If you don't enjoy working like that, I do. But if you don't, then it's okay if you merge everything down before this step or, I don't know, maybe use some kind of smart object or whatever. Anyway, you duplicate the color layer. You hit filter, you pixelate, and hit color halftone. The max radius 8 works pretty well at A4 format, 300 DPI. If you're working at a different size, you will most likely have to change this number up here, the max radius, which changes the radius of the dots that you get. You're going to see. There we go. Seen those dots. This is max size 8. Again, you might have to change that depending on what your your the size of your file is. Um, and again, you find a layer mode that you enjoy. And set it to that. I will again go with multiply and then reduce the the opacity a little bit. And if you want to keep it real simple, that's it. Now there's more that you can do and that I, for example, like to do. Um, one of those things is you might feel that everything still looks a bit too perfect. Um, so what you can do is create a mask on whatever layer you want to have looking a little bit less perfect, I am going to use the color layer right now. Use a textured brush, a quite strongly textured brush, and then you go over it easily in black, which means in mask is, is that it's invisible, and you just you distress it a little bit, like the printing machine has been working all day, every day, all week, and is tired and doesn't really want to do its job anymore. And then you get this kind of thing. You can do the same with inks. However, for the inks, there's another thing that I like to do. Again, you copy them, um, and then you hit filter again. But this time we're going to use be using a Gaussian blur um, set to something like two point something. You can fiddle with that. Like if you use more, then it starts looking a bit funky, but maybe you can make it work. I don't know. Um, do that. 
then <laughs> you can do this before you you blur it or after it doesn't matter you lock the transparency in the layer thing you pick a color something like maybe red usually works quite well like a nice burgundy red and you color this entire layer in red which looks fucking weird but then you put it on multiply and there you go well, actually the red is not good Less saturate. Again, you can just hit Control U, bring up the hue saturation, and just fiddle with it until you like it. What that does is basically give you a bit of an effect of a bleed on the paper, which, if you've ever used felt tip pens on cheap printer paper or any other cheap paper, then you will have seen this effect, and that's what that does. Like these old timey comics. Illustrations often were printed on quite cheap paper, which is why this effect looks so familiar to us. And that's it, pretty much. There is not really very much more to it. Um, you can, of course, add all sorts of other stuff. Um, use all sorts of other tools. I, for example, recently downloaded an entire pack of distressing uh, well, like brushes and textures and such um, from, I keep forgetting the name, um, but uh, the link will be in the description somewhere. Um, and what they offer is uh, stuff like, for example, this kind of thing. You have a pattern brush of something that is already already um, textured. And it, what it also does is use the, as far as I know, exact color set that they used to have in the 19-somethings, 50s or 60s or 70s or whatever else. Um, it's pretty nice. Um, yeah, that's it, pretty much. Uh, it's fairly simple, fairly quick and dirty. And uh, yeah, I hope you learned perhaps a little bit. And uh, that's it. Bye.